Great. Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Alexandra Michalescu at RepRisk to discuss what investors need to know when using ESG data and how they can avoid checkbox exercise and greenwashing. Alexandra, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks, Jill. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. You got it. And how have industry trends corresponded with the growth of RepRisk and ESG in general over the past year? Well, the growth in the industry has really been astronomical. Sustainable investments have almost doubled over four years and more than tripled over the last eight. And RepRisk growth has really been in lockstep. And I think there's also been a recent shift in thinking in the field of ESG. It's now widely accepted that having a risk focus and also looking beyond company disclosures is really key. And this has been our approach from the very beginning evaluating companies using a risk perspective with information coming from outside those companies and really believe that that this type of information is the best way to generate meaningful and actionable ESG signals. So we work at the intersection of some of the most exciting uh, trends in the, in the industry, advanced technology like AI and machine learning, big data, ESG. So it's a, it's a great time to be in the field to say the least. Why is this growth and shift in thinking happening now? Well, I think ESG has really been on the rise over the last few years. Um, and I think in many ways, we're going to look back at 2020 as a sort of turning point for ESG. And I think COVID had a big part to play in that in that uh, moment. Um, at first, there was concern that COVID would um, sideline ESG, but in fact, the opposite happened. And um, I think that's because the pandemic really helped to underscore in a very tangible way for people the interconnectivity between the health of our environment and the health of our society and the health of our economy. And this together with just reaching a critical mass of understanding of awareness uh, around ESG. So all happened at the same time. Um, think of the last 10 years. So many of the larger business scandals, think of all the way back to BP, but also to Volkswagen, to Wirecard, to Boohoo, all of these big issues were ESG related in some way. And so we shouldn't refer to ESG as extra financial or non-financial data. This information is absolutely can have a material impact on a material financial impact on a company, not to mention the reputational or compliance ones. So I think now looking you know, towards, towards this year, it's safe to say that after what happened last year, ESG has reached the mainstream. It's very much a, a must have, no longer a nice to have. And how a company manages these issues can be seen um, as a sign of how future proof they are in a world that's constantly changing. What do investors need to know when using ESG data and how can they avoid the checking the box exercise and greenwashing so they can truly do good while doing well? I think market practitioners should know that there is an increased call from investors, from the public, and more recently from regulators for accountability and transparency for companies. And I think RepRisk is ahead of the curve when it comes to providing transparency. So we actually provide transparency to our clients through the data that we provide, giving them insights into the ESG risks that companies face. But we're also transparent with our clients about how we find our data, how we analyze that data, and how we quantify that data. So not all data is created equal, and um, a lot of the ESG, de ESG data out there um, can lead to roadblocks that you hear so much about these days. You hear about black, spo black box methodologies. You hear about risks masked by company uh, reporting information. You read about incomplete coverage or outdated data. The list goes on. As ESG grows in popularity, the field and ratings in general have faced a lot of criticism, many of which you just mentioned. How does rep risk address that? Yeah, so first let me start by saying that all of our clients essentially come to rep risk for the same thing. They come because we help them to systematically identify, assess, and then monitor the ESG risks in their business and in their investments. So we look at ESG from this risk perspective and risk management is just one part of ESG but it's an essential part. So we see rep risk as the seatbelt of ESG. It's just essential for good risk management. And we evaluate a company um, on ESG risks using this outside in perspective. So what does that mean? We're looking at what the world says about a company, not what a company is saying about itself. 
So we avoid this tick the box approach of like, okay, the company has a human rights policy. It has a climate change policy. What instead we're telling our clients is how in fact is that company managing human rights, climate change, or any other issues around the world where they operate? So in essence, what we provide to clients is like a reality check to how companies are conducting their business around the world. And we do this work by having this unique combination of uh, uh, marrying technology with human intelligence. So the way that we see it is we take the best of both worlds. Technology like AI, machine learning really helps deliver, help, helps us deliver the size and scale of our data set and the speed with which we can get that data into the hands of our clients. And then the work of the analyst is to play the role of curator and do the actual analysis to make sure that the, the information is relevant and has depth that the clients require. And this combination of the two ensures that we're able to deliver decision useful, actionable data to our clients with the timeliness and the coverage that they need. So all of this leads to us having the largest data set on ESG risks. So data on over 170,000 public and private companies from all sectors everywhere in the world, including emerging and frontier markets, which helps clients integrate ESG across all asset classes from fixed income to private equity, to infrastructure, to everything in between. And Alexandra, what's next for ESG? Well, I think so much is happening now around uh, ESG, um, but let me highlight two of the things that, that are top of mind for us. And one is innovation. So I think with the in advancements in technology, there are a lot of different tools and data sets that REPRIS can leverage to further build out our capability of identifying and assessing ESG risks for our clients. So one example is we're exploring geospatial data and other types of sensing data. And another point is um, our, our focus with quant focused investors. So we've seen an, an increase in interest from these types of investors, such as hedge funds over the last years. And here, I think we have a unique story to tell because if you're a quant focused invest, investor, you ideally need three things. You need a long time series, you need granular data, and you need a stable, consistent data over time. And to be frank, Reprisk is the only ESG data provider to fulfill these three critical criteria. We have a time series that goes back close to 15 years. We have daily granularity. We've had that throughout our history. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, our uh, approach is based on a rules-based methodology. And that ensures consistent, stable data over time. And really important is that the data is generated point in time, not reverse engineered. And that really ensures good data for proper back testing and modeling. And a good example of how this data can support the work of clients is a research report that Bank of America did last year with our data that really confirmed uh, RepRisk as an effective alpha signal. So they tested RepRisk and found that it can deliver investment outperformance and also reduce volatility across sectors, across geographies, across different market uh, company sizes, large and small caps, and across investment styles. So we're really excited to have our data in the NASDAQ ESG uh, data hub. And we think it's a great and very significant step forward for having ESG data available in the alternative data space. All right, Alexandra, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.